Okay, let's watch this video. This is a rep paladin in Burning Crusade against Brutalis. I can't listen to this music. Okay, this is Brutalis, April 7th, 2008. So what are we seeing here? Bloodlust, Wind Fury, Bestial Rage, or whatever the heck. Are those some drums? This guy is not seal twisting. He's just using seal of blood. No seal twisting. Look, look here. Look at how he's constantly just like boom, 74 mana, boom, 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 boom. It's going insane. Look at how look at how much this thing procs. Look at all like his his mana is just like. Is this threat meter? Is that Erica? Is that him? So he's just constantly getting mana back. Number three on damage. Oh frick, dude. Fallen gear. Well, you know what's crazy? I remember looking at WoW Armory, and there were so many Blood Elf Paladins with like legit crazy gear, and Alliance Rep Paladins, hardly anyone with good gear because there was already this culture that was set in place that Paladins sucked from vanilla, so they wouldn't get gear. And then in Burning Crusade, they gave them a little bit of gear, and it's like, oh wait, these guys can freaking rip. So this guy is not seal twisting at all. He is just straight using Seal of Blood. So the exorcism is not that much DPS, Chobotas. Even in even in vanilla, even in Nax, right? I played Horton TVC and our paladins are stacked. Yeah. Stop overriping Ret. There will only be one slot for Rets at best. Are you stupid? Chombers, I literally said that. There will be one slot for Rets. Hey, this guy is like, S fan, you're an idiot. And then he says the same thing that I say. Tier sets are best. I think I think the the best thing to do will probably be a combination of tier. I, I don't think full tier sets. At least back in the day, people didn't really use full ret tier that much. They used it, but not like the full set. Enrage in one minute. Like, this is crazy. Is he is he chaining mana pots? Let me look at this again one more time. Is he using mana potions? He's using haste potions. He's not even using mana pots. He's using haste pots. I mean, the way this guy is playing, it would be less. I mean, he's not seal twisting. He's using haste pots instead of mana pots. I mean, here's the problem with Dragon Spine Trophy. If you're not seal twisting, it's it's insane. But look at them, they're rotating drums the whole time. Look at this. And they, they're about to hit the enraged timer in one minute. He's getting wind veer procs. Wow, right at the enrage timer. Look at that. Big damage. Brutalis down. I love this thing for showing it. Yeah, dude. All the people, rogues suck. Rogues suck in vanilla. Or in Burning Crusade. Last patch though, yeah, but it, like what I'm saying, it doesn't matter. Like, like, it, like you're you're still gonna be able to do all the content. Like, it's not a big deal, and that's my whole point. He's not using mana potions because the new paladin passive. No, no, um, that's not the only reason. He was getting mana from the totem. He was getting mana from Judgment of Wisdom. The mana from the return damage healing alone is not is that's not enough to sustain you for the whole fight. But it's insane to me that with all other things, it was still completely enough. So he was able to use a haste potion. And to be fair, the haste potion, he swings faster. So if he's swinging faster, he's hitting more. And if he's hitting more, he's getting more wisdom procs. So too many people are meta slaves. 99% of players can play whatever they want and be just fine. Yeah, like I, I think you have to approach the game that like you understand how the typical player is going to play the game. And in reality, I mean, I said this about classic too. Whenever you say something should be more friendly or catered towards casuals, they think you should make the content easier. That isn't necessarily what it means. A lot of what it means is you have to make it enjoyable. And sometimes making something harder does end up making it more enjoyable for casuals because what happens is something is like, it gets put on a pedestal and it means more whenever you do complete it. Don't confuse what I'm saying with me saying they should make certain things more difficult in Burning Crusade, but this was 100% the issue with WoW Classic. People discredited everything that everybody did because it was such a joke to do whatever. Thoughts on drum meta? What I think they should do, I think the current solution, I think a lot of people have, have said this, they kind of missed the mark with it. 
it doesn't really change anything and it makes it more annoying and more difficult and people are gonna do it anyway, so it's just gonna make it worse. It's almost like they put in a solution that are like, oh, maybe it'll discourage people from doing it, but in reality, it just makes them do it anyway and it's, it's more difficult. I think what they should do is they should make heroism, bloodlust, same thing. They should make heroism and drums raid wide, give you a debuff, but they're, the drums are just weaker. And some people who are trying to min max and whatever, well, doesn't that make drums useless? No, it doesn't because in the case of a typical player's experience, there won't always be a raid or a dungeon or whatever that you're in that has a uh, shaman in it. So here's the issue. And the issue with that is, you guys noticed how we've been watching that video, they had drums running, like the whole fight. They had people rotating shamans for heroism groups. This is something that Blizzard knew and what they ended up doing was they ended up tuning the fights around people playing the game this way. So what's gonna happen if all of a sudden you can't rotate heroism into your top DPS group? You see what I'm saying? If you can't rotate heroism into your top DPS group to maximize the amount of throughput of your raid into the boss, is this actually going to end up making the bosses in the later tiers like Sunwell more difficult? Is it gonna be impossible? I don't know. I don't think it'll be impossible. It could end up being much more difficult. So, is that a good solution? I actually don't know, is my point. And I think the only way to find out if it's a good solution is to do one thing, and that one thing is we do raid testing in the TBC beta and we try different versions of heroism and drums and just see how it goes. Let's come up with a few different versions of this and just test each one and see how it works. Because I think if you can do the solution of what I'm talking about, where you just have a weaker version of drums than heroism, I think if you can pull that off and it's not like the fights are impossible now, I think that's better. And to be honest with you, I think that's better gameplay. I don't necessarily think it's a good gameplay to have it where you have to be like rotating shamans. You have one person who's like playing mission control and just rotating shamans in and out of a group. I, I don't think that's good. Moving people around in groups is dumb. Yeah, like it's it's really not good gameplay. Like this is something that they probably should have realized in Burning Crusade and instead of, now it's this is what's kind of dumb, right? Because now you're kind of talking about the issue of Blizzard making people play the game the way they want you to play the game as opposed to the way the players are doing. Like that ended up being emergent gameplay, right? What the emergent gameplay of, hey, we need to be able to down these bosses was, was, hey, we gotta rotate people into groups. In reality, what they probably should have done 15 years ago, they probably been, should have said, hey, this is dumb and this probably shouldn't be the case and let's find a solution for it to where people can get their heroism and whatnot. That would have been better addressed, in my opinion, as let's not tune the fights around people doing this. Let's just make people not be able to do this and not tune the fights around it. And that is why Bloodlust is raid wide with Sated nowadays. Exactly. They eventually made that change in retail, and I've, I've always been very vocal about this. I don't think something is inherently better just because, oh, well, that's how it was in vanilla. I don't think something's inherently better in retail because, oh, well, you know, that's, that's what they did when they learned from their mistakes. But sometimes there are little things like this, design wise, that you really have to go to the drawing board and make the best decision design wise for the game and how it's gonna pan out. How much weaker would you make them considering the only 5% haste to begin with? Oh no, I would make them, I would buff them overall, but not to the point where you need like a million leather workers in the raid. If somebody in the raid happens to be leather working, you would just have it, but it wouldn't take the place of a shaman's heroism. So it would be good for something like a Karazhan group or a five man dungeon, or, you know, God forbid, you don't have a shaman in a 25 man raid. Wait, well at least we got drums. Guys. Terracar Forest. Terracar Forest. Oh frick. There it is, dude. There is Shatrath. There it is. Dude, I remember sitting down here and up here for hours. All day, dude. Dude. Right here, next to the flight path. I think there's a flight path on both sides. 
Is they're just right here. Yeah. Less there's a flight three. master. There's a flight thing on both sides. Safe journey. Here it is. The Q guys. Get her back. The He Man. Good fortune. What can I do for you? The dailies. This is where the dailies would be. Dude, this is so much, I'm telling you, man, Burning Crusade is so much more nostalgic than, than vanilla to me. Because I have so many hours and hours and hours played of, of vanilla WoW. Like, a ridiculous amount of days played. But Burning Crusade, I d didn't really play it on private after, after I played it originally. And originally, in retail Burning Crusade, that's whenever, like, I was, like, actually good at the game. Because I wasn't actually good in Retail Vanilla. Amazing. This is the inn. Where is the- hey, hey, where is a uh, is- is Grifta here? Beautiful. Arena vendor? Arena battle master? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Grifta? Is he down here in this room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing amulets. Dude, there were so many rumors about- are you supposed to wear- like, are you supposed to wear some crazy, like, soap on a rope? Talisman of true treasure tracking. This is one of them. People thought that you had to wear talisman of true treasure tracking to be able to find the way to cleanse the corrupted Ashbringer to finish out that story. That I still feel to this day, like, and, and people keep asking if Blizzard is going to go through and, and, like, secretly, like, add that as, like, a bonus in Burning Crusade to actually finish out the Ashbringer storyline. I don't think they will, but, man... There were so, there were just hours and hours and hours spent trying to figure out how to do that thing. But this was great. Dude, people would buy this stuff and think that it would do anything. And it's literally all, this is all a scam. Every single one of these things is just a waste of gold. Yes. Like, the you know, the Corrupted Ashbringer appearance in Legion is a reference to all the old, uh, all the old methods of allegedly finding the uncorrupted Ashbringer in, from Vanilla. I was never a huge lore guy, a good one. but I loved killing chickens. I love... <laughs>